It's time for the Wrestling Observer Extra. With Dave Meltzer, right here on The Law, live audio wrestling. And let's go, my now smoking with the best, the best. Welcome back, hour two of The Law. Keep in mind, still to come, Impact Wrestling president Ed Nornholm, and he speaks with John Pollock. That is coming up in this hour. And title about trivia is after Meltzer as well, so if you would like to get in on it, give us a call right now so we can line you up for your chance to win a T-shirt from Barbershop Window. It is 1-855-591-6876. Hope you watch tonight's pay-per-view. Need two people to play the game. This gentleman watched tonight's pay-per-view. And Dave, uh, the, the win- Jinder Mahal is your champion. Not surprising to us. And actually, looking at my online feeds and people messaging, not getting an overly negative reaction to it. How did you feel? I mean, we, we know what the game is. And if the game is to, you know, um, make a big difference in the India market, then you should make him champion. Um, for the North American market, it's, it's, you know, it's not for the North American market. For the North American market, it's probably not the best thing. For the Indian market, um, there's nobody else. So there's, you know, there's a lot of people who live in that market, and they, they don't make a lot of money off of it. And can they make money off of it? I mean, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a marketing ploy. There's no, um, it's no right or wrong until we see the results we're not going to see the results right away. I mean, normally, I would tell people, you know, look at the look at the ratings, look at the attendance. Um, the ticket sales for tonight's show were, um, I mean, they were they, they 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 sold really good before the card was announced, very poorly mm. after the card was announced, and um, you know, TV ratings are down. But you know, that's the NBA playoffs, and who knows what that means? Um, you know, and they're down on Raw too, so it's, it's you know the. We'll see what, you know, if it makes a difference with live attendance. It probably won't. It, you know, if it does, it does. Um, but it's for, the, it's for the India market. In regards to tonight's show, uh, we were very surprised, not with Jinder, but with the opening of tonight's yes. show, which was Nakamura being the first match on the actual pay-per-view portion. Uh, and, you know... They brought him out. They did the entrance. Nothing spectacular like they had done in the past on NXT. No violin player to me. And, and not an overwhelming match. I mean, how did you take this Nakamura debut? I wasn't too keen on it. I wouldn't disagree with that. I was underwhelmed. I thought um, it was just a match. Yeah. You know, it was just a match. He didn't come off like nearly the star that, he, that, he was, that he's been coming off on on television. Um, the reaction didn't seem overly great. I mean, all night long it seemed like nothing compared to the reactions, you know, last night. Yeah, I yeah, mean, it, yeah. It, it, it really, I mean, it felt like night and day. I mean, I don't know what to say about it when you're, when the the brand that you spend a lot more money on is is, um, you know, getting such flat reactions, and your other brand tore the house down. It's really weird to watch. Um, and and the, you know, I thought that like last night's card would spur everyone on to like you know really kick ass. And it really didn't. I mean, I just thought that the show was, I, I didn't think the show was good at all. Dave, we just had a caller call in and ask about the fact that WWE is running takeover events and pay-per-views on the same weekend in the same city. And initially it was for crossover crowds on bigger events. But now, would it be, do you think it might be better to separate these two, considering we repeatedly see takeovers outdo the main uh, cards? Um, I think it's just it's just that the main cards need to be better in some way, um, and they're not. Um, but I don't think separating them isn't going to make the cards better. Um, and so I, I mean, from from an economic standpoint, having them run in the same weekend makes all the sense in the world. Um, but yeah, it, it made it made tonight very flat. And you know, who knows? I mean, did did last night's show tire people out for tonight? I mean, I suppose, but probably not. I mean, I think it's just, you know, because they were, they were pretty up for um, Ty Dillinger. I think that it's, you know, the, the show wasn't nearly as good as the show the night before. I think that's all there is to it. I mean, they, I mean, not, you know, they're not, they were, the shows weren't even the same league. No, alone, they weren't. Oh, yeah. Uh, just in terms of placing Nakamura in that curtain jerker spot, like, have you heard anything about why that would be? I mean, the whole pay per view advertising wise seemed to be based around Nakamura. We were debating on the show last week whether that would be your main event. Why, right. to me, why, why was it in the curtain jerker spot? I have no answer at all because it makes no sense to me either. I mean, it's like, even if you didn't want to put it last because you wanted to have the championship 
match last. Okay, so put you it could, in the middle could, of the show or something. You could, like You could put it late in the middle of the show, absolutely. Yeah, no, I don't have an answer for that. I don't know why. Um, it doesn't make it doesn't make sense given given the way the show was advertised. Putting him in the opening match yeah. made no sense at all. It made no sense at all. All right. Well, let's 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 switch over to some more <laughs> positive matters. Can make here. some sense out of things. Uh, no, talking about Takeover last night. Of course, I think this was a show that I didn't think had a great build towards it, but it definitely over delivered. Uh, an interesting choice in regards to the tag team championship going last, but after watching the angle, it seemed to make total sense. Um, what did you think, Dave? Uh, I mean, the card obviously was great, but let's start with the main event there. How did you think the Authors of Pain uh, carried to a great match, but the breakup of Gargano and Ciampa? Tremendous. Um, and, and um, you know, I didn't, I didn't know it was coming. I mean, you know, there, I, there were sort of hints coming around that, that Gargano was going to go as a single, so I guess you could sort of see that that was a possibility. But I, I thought um, the way it was all set up and everything, I thought it was a really, really great turn. You know, sure beats the hell out of AJ Styles' turn. <laughs> were, were were you surprised that they did it, like Dave? Because I mean, I I figured after they lost the match, I thought, okay, well that's it. That we're finally going to get these guys to move up to the main roster. But obviously, now it appears that will not happen. Yeah, I got the feeling that that they're going to have a cycle of matches against each other, which is good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it makes I think it makes sense. I didn't like I said I didn't know, but I wasn't surprised either. Mm-hmm. And and. Um, there were certain things that were happening as far as, you know, when, when Gargano saved Ciampa, that the way that was done, it was, to me, that was like, okay, they're going to turn, but I didn't know they would turn like a minute later. I mm-hmm. thought that like maybe that that would build to a turn in a couple weeks. Right. And it's funny too how adding something as simple as a logo in the corner, making you think the show was over, how much more impact that gave it. That was really well done. Yeah, you know, they... They hit a lot of cool tricks last night, and they hit on, like, nothing, no cool tricks tonight. <laughs> That's right. They forgot them all the next night, I guess, or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, man, I, it's it's like, I don't know what to say, because it's like one brand is, is, like, puts on such great shows, and then you get this other brand that, you know, just so flat. And on the brand from last night, you had the United Kingdom Championship uh, ch- change hands, actually, because Pete Dunne is now the champion. Uh, so here's yet another championship that should be on another show, but it's on NXT. I mean, naturally, these guys tore down the house. But what is the future for the United Kingdom Championship and that show? You mean the, the – I've I heard nothing new about the U.K. show. I mean, the idea is a weekly show, but I don't know a start date. And um, the championship will be the focal point of that show. And I guess that they'll probably, I think after tonight, I would think that I would bring that championship in for at least big pay-per-views. I, I mean, you could put it on the main roster. You probably should. It gives the title more credibility on the main roster. But who knows? Maybe the main roster fans wouldn't have reacted the same. I don't know. But that match was awfully good. I mean, and it would be embarrassing if, if on the main roster they, they did what they did because it would just like make everyone look bad in comparison. Uh, Dave, I'm curious to see what you think is going to happen with Roderick Strong now, too. They did those great vignettes leading into this show. Uh, he won his match. But, I mean, where do you see him, uh, like, after after this past weekend? He may be, you know, they may do more stuff with Sanity. They may do something with him and Bobby Roode. I mean, which makes sense. You know, Bobby Roode beat a Tommy. I mean, obviously, they're going with Bobby Roode and McIntyre, but maybe that they'll go with Roderick Strong first. Mm. So I could, I, could see, I could definitely see that coming off of uh, last night's show. Uh, we haven't touched on Raw uh, on the show as of yet. Braun Strowman, uh, you know, they're saying six months, but this is not necessarily that serious of an injury, not, correct? Not, not even close, yeah. So what are we looking at here? What's the story with Braun? Six weeks, eight weeks. Um, I mean, the idea is back, back for SummerSlam, yeah. Mm-hmm. And paired with Lesnar at SummerSlam? I don't know that for sure, but that would seem to make sense. Because, um, you know, originally he was going to be on the headline the July show with Lesnar, and whoever was going to headline SummerSlam, who I presumed was Rollins, but I don't know that as a fact, would probably be the one, you know, that gets the July and they'll just flip-flop the original plan. Now, what did you think on Monday? You know, we, we spent last week the majority of time talking with you about this injury and how the WWE was going to play it out, and now you have the five-man match that's going to be happening at the next pay-per-view. Uh, how did you think they broke this down and this went? I don't know. I mean, it didn't like excite me as anything special, but it, I mean, it's like, all right, whatever. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was. It, it wasn't the you know. It wasn't. It was an idea. It it, it kind of takes a lot of depth away from the show itself because all the top guys are going to be in one, one or match. a lot of the top guys yeah. are going to be in one match, and it's not going to be all that deep of a show when it comes to to names. But um, 
I do think it ramps in a bad way. I do think it ramps up your parody booking and even Stephen booking here. Because what I see for the next two weeks is those five guys all having matches and yeah, taking turns other. beating Back one and another. Yeah. Um, I, nobody I, special. I, I, I agree with you there. The other thing, too, is honestly, they, they could just do a tournament where you have matches on, on Raw you know, that, that means something yep. about parody booking. Yep. And then the two winners, you know, meet on the pay-per-view. And then the other guys can be, like, taken out. Let's say, you know, Bray Wyatt would take out Finn Balor, let's say, right? Mm-hmm. So you could start their program that way, and, and you can have a regular card rather than put everyone in the five-way. But, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I think that the five-way in their mind, um, you know, it, 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 it's more unpredictable because you just don't know who's going to win, whereas in a singles match, people would probably figure out who was going to win because of, you know, it's Lesnar and, and whoever of the two guys, one of them probably, unless it ended up being Rollins against Balor, and then you wouldn't know. Um, now, Jay mentioned the Braun Strowman and that injury, how it's being exaggerated, the time for recovery. Uh, with Tanahashi here, it seems like to be the exact opposite. He should be taking, getting surgery, taking months off, and it looks like he's going to be off two weeks, maybe? Um, he's going to be off till June the 9th. So, yeah, like three weeks. It's insane. That's all I'll say. I mean, you know, a full muscle tear. I mean, guys have done it. I mean, Roddy Piper, when he was in WCW, had a full muscle tear, and he actually took no time off. But it's, you know, and Randy Savage, uh, which was um, a tricep, not a bicep. But, um, you know, the same thing. But it's like, it's, it's, just, it's just, in this day and age, I mean, the old school guys did it. But in this day and age, it's something that you really shouldn't do, especially a guy like Tanahashi, who's such a superstar. It's like they really should. You know, it's the old Japanese mentality, and, mm-hmm. and um, you know, that's just how they think there. Uh, but, yeah, I, I would have really, you know, I, I think it would be much better for him to take the six months off, have the surgery, and come back, come back completely healthy rather than rush him back for a G1 and risk, you know, risk just beating him down more. Mm-hmm. All right, we now have to go to Mexico. We do have to talk about this. And talk yes. about what is not an angle, but it's <laughs> actually happening and involves the car of Ultimo Guerrero. What is this story, Dave? So there was a meeting on Thursday, and um, Ultimo Guerrero in the meeting must have said or did say something negative about, I believe, Brazo de Oro, who was the one of the Alvarado brothers who just passed away. The one away who just passed away, ago. yeah. Right. So he must have said something negative about him because Brazo de Oro was the head of the union because um, they actually have a union there, but it's not a – it's a, it's a um, promotion-sponsored union. It's not like a wrestler-sponsored union. But, but whatever Ultimo Guerrero said the next, day, the next morning uh, when he came to Arena Mexico because he works in the office, um, they smashed in his car. I mean, for real – and um, they're, you know, two members of the Alvarado family, which are Maximo and La Mascara, are the their world heavyweight champion and their world light heavyweight champion. And they were both fired on Friday or Saturday, actually. So, um, yeah, it's it's a real big deal there, you know, as far as that. Um, and um, you know, there's the Brazos have a lot of friends, so it's it's a, it's you know, if, if other people leave, I don't know that they will, but there's always that talk, but. Still, you know, like La Mascara was one of the key guys in Los Ingo Bernables, and um, you know, and you know, and Maximo was their world champion. Now, so what does that do for CMLL then? Doesn't help them, that's for sure. <laughs> well, yes, they, I mean, they're, they're the type of promotion that they can work around it because they have, you know, they're not reliant on any one star, um, and and but you know, yeah, it's a big blow, and it's um, it's definitely like not, you know, it's not a good public image either, you know, where you know. You know, wrestlers are bashing in the car of other wrestlers. I mean, it's like, you know, like, again, it sounds like an angle. There's actually footage of it, so you would think it's an angle, but it's, you know, you know the police are involved. It's not an angle. So, so it's strange. Bizarre, yep. All righty. Uh, well, we have to say goodbye for this week, Dave, but in the Observer, what do we got? Uh, we'll probably cover all of that stuff and whatever happens the next couple of days and hopefully a big feature on Joe Silva and how he shaped the history of UFC. Nice. And the story on the uh, UFC Fighter Summit and on uh, the New Japan shows coming up and, um, you know, whatever else, like I get, whatever else happens with WWE in the next, the next couple of days. Fantastic. WrestlingObserver.com is where you can find all that. And Dave, you'll be back here uh, next week chatting with us. Absolutely. Great. Have a great week. Okay, you too. Dave Meltzer, WrestlingObserver.com. 